to do the most heinous act, even death cannot cleanse away from your soul. Mr. Richard Stevenson, if you can hear this, I pity that you are around. I pity the island that you are on. Because they have to live around you. And the sheer fact that you could do this again. That's what I want to say to him. Any final words, Elaine? I just wanted to address, you know, that I understand Zach is angry, you know, but we don't hold or blame the Jamaican people for what has happened. The more that important thing that we are addressing is the fact that he is free. He has done this to me. I don't want to see him do it to anyone else. No one else gets hurt. No one else gets through this. I almost wasn't alive. I couldn't. I almost killed myself going through this. No one else must go through this. The truth needs to be known. The truth needs to be known. The person that he really is needs to be known. Because I cannot bear the thought of it happening to someone else. This is a lifetime scar. And I'm sure all the survivors would agree, this is a lifetime scar. With that said, I want to bring on um, Marlene. She's also a survivor and she is a professional in this field that I am. Um, I would like for her to, you know, give me a, um, her take on, on, on what's going on here because I think this needs some professionals I'm just opening up the platform to you guys so you guys can let the world know what your what your um your truth is. Um so I'm gonna bring on um Marlene. So you can stay on. I think she maybe have a few words for you guys. All right. Hi, Hi Marlene, how are you? Hi, Mr. Vegas. Thank you for having me on the show. This I, was so. I, I apologize. I apologize for having you so waiting so long. I should have given you a later time, but I did not know it was gonna. But That's... thank you for thank you for sitting in. Thank you, Elaine. I'm listening to you, and I'm hearing the pain that you're feeling, and listening to your story, and I'm listening also to your husband and just hearing the pain that you both bring to this situation. I am a licensed clinician and I have my own story of abuse where I was abused for years. And I think, you know, when that happens that we, can, we struggle with people believing our story, which, you know, this is someone famous that you're talking about and I'm sure that, you know, you will hear a lot of people that will say, basically, they'll question everything that you're saying. I can relate to the fear that you said you feel when this is happening to you. And I can also, you know, I hear what you said you were feeling at the time. I'm also very aware, just like you said that they're saying in Australia, this is a case that's ongoing and I'm sure that there's legal implications to it and that it will be looked at at so many angles. And I'm sure that consent, you know, the consensual, um, you know, basically will be the big issue here. I think, you know, stepping back 
as any other person. What I'm also hearing is common for everyone that's in similar situation that you're alone with someone in an apartment or wherever it may be. And there's some sexual assault or whatever it may be alleged, you know, at this point, it's your, your word against his and the way that any court of law or jury or whoever will basically put the pieces together to try to figure out if this is true or not true. That's what I'm hearing. However, it doesn't take away from you as a woman that was in this situation and is basically saying, this is what happened. And then you have the other party, which is, you know, Mr. Stevens, Mr. Um, Richie, basically saying what happened there. So there's two stories and I am hearing your pain as you tell the story. And like I said, I could relate to that. And I think like for myself, listening to the story, and I guess, you know, I need to just say it because I'm talking to you about this and you're right. A lot of people will question like certain parts that you say, like you gave him a hug because you felt that, you know, for whatever reason that you hugged him. And I'm also knowing that culturally, that your culture is very, very trusting. I'm also hearing that, and I, you know, as a clinician, you know, I'm trained on diversity and I understand like so much of how your culture is in terms of very, very trusting and taking people at their word. Am I right, Elaine? Yep. Okay. And I hear, you know, your husband said the same thing too. So basically culturally that when someone gives you your words or someone apologizes, you expect it to be so. And all of that I'm very conscious of only because, you know, based on the field that I work in. So I am taking that into, into consideration of how trusting your culture is. And, you know, I can only wish that where you're concerned that you continue to get help and get treatment with your trauma, like you said, and how you're reliving it over and over again. And in your situation, I'm guessing that for whatever reason, you know, I don't know if it was financially that you had to remain on the tour or whatever, you know, your, your situation is at the time, meaning that Maybe you were working, were you working there? What was the story with that? Are you referring to why I was on the tour? Yeah, not the reason as to why. What I'm asking is, you know, the fact that you guys were there, like whatever, you know, your reason is, I, I know you said that you were documenting stuff. Yes. Okay, so, you know, I'm guessing that's, it, that's the reason that you were on that tour based on what you said. I was working with Major One, so I was part of her team, and I was assisting on her end, and she was doing a collaboration. It was the Jamaican Flavor Tour was a collaborative tour be be between the both of them. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was trying to, to figure out, the, you know, the reason that you were actually there and working with him. I figured it was something to do. It was work-related. I just needed to clarify that. Mm-hmm. And at the, I also understand when you said about what a jury would look like, because you're absolutely right in terms of what a jury would look like and in terms of the questions that they will ask and the conclusions that they might come up with. You're absolutely right with all that. However, my question to you is this. It sounds like, you know, like culturally, just that you're coming out and talking about these things that happen to you like, how are you being perceived by other, like your friends, your fa not even family so much, but friends and people that know you socially? How are you being perceived by them by, just because you're coming out and talking about what happened to you? Well, I have people who support me. The survivors support me. My allies support me. My friends support me. But my own family, not so much. They rather not even have this thing go out. So, you know, this whole thing about 
does anybody understand how difficult it is to come forward as an Asian person to say, I got raped? This is not a joking matter. My face is going to be everywhere. How my culture is going to perceive me, that's a whole different aspect that I need to deal with. Absolutely. And that's what I was thinking when I was listening to you. And, and I know you, I sound a bit hoarse because I was listening to you and I got very emotional just from your story and what you were stating. And it's, um, I can only hope that you find the peace and also that you're able to, to get some kind of, I guess, satisfaction in what you're seeking. And I did hear you, you know, just say that you want the courts to continue with this case. Is that what you're hoping for? Yes, but I will be honest and say that the Australian police wants to close the case. And they haven't really paid much attention to it. I had to chase for my own results. They haven't gave me everything that I asked for. They don't, they don't want to give me a proper police report. Sergeant XXX did what, what was done. None of that. They only gave me a sheet of paper that said, okay, you made a police report. My case is not taken seriously. So am I supposed to trust the justice system that it will proceed? I hear what you're saying. And I think that's someone that every person that's, that has struggled with sexual assault basically goes through. It's not only in Australia, but it's just about in every country, just about. And I actually read some of the Australian laws a few minutes ago. Actually, about an hour or so ago, Mr. Vegas had provided me with some of that. And I was reading through, and it basically will take, you know, take a lot to prove based on what their law is there. So I did, I, you know, it was, it was good that he sent that to me prior to this interview, because in hearing what you said and what I read, like it basically made sense. And, you know, for all parties involved, whether it's you or whether, you know, the person that, that you're saying did something to you, I'm just hoping that some agreement could be reached between the both of you as to, Accountability. I'm very big on accountability when it comes to sexual issues because as a survivor myself, I know I spent many years trying to get someone to say to me, I am sorry. That's all I needed to hear. And I, you know, I know that as a as someone that goes through it, that's what we want. We want someone to take accountability and say, you know, I did this to you and I'm sorry and really mean it so that way we can begin the process of healing. And is that what you're expecting, Elaine? Like, what are you expecting? You might, I, I know a lot of people would expect, I am sorry, but I have also heard of people who haven't come forward, who haven't said anything, and they never got justice. I spoke to a lot of survivors they said that the always that very scary part is the fact that when you let a perpetrator go, when you tolerate rape, when you tolerate rapists, he's free to do it to someone else. So the amount of risk that I'm carrying is not to seek cloud. It doesn't make sense for me to seek cloud as a Singaporean to Jamaica. It's important that, 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 that you said that, Elaine, and, and Marlene maybe can speak on this a little bit more because of the studies that you have done. Um, I think what people do not understand is for uh, in our culture, it is looked at a person who, who goes through this, they're not looked at um, in a good way. Oh, yeah, of course. And, and the media doesn't want to talk about it. I'm not even speaking on the fact that to take in because I'm trying to be very objective in this situation. Yeah. But, but based on the studies that I've done, and you've you have done more studies on this than, than I have done, I'm aware that it's like a disgrace. Like, you know, you're like, you know, you're an you're an outcast in this culture. Yeah. It's 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 actually like 
is not is not it's it's is not even something that men would be like want to be seen with a woman that you know goes through those because things. Because they're considered so I applaud, dirty. I applaud the, you're the, the use, you're considered dirty. You're considered dirty. And most people believe that the moment that happened and that fact goes out, you're never gonna find a guy. You're never gonna marry. Your life is gone. You might as well go kill yourself. Are you scared of losing your fiance? No. No, because during this terrible time, he see me through it all. He was there for me. And I know his, his temper. But he was patient. He was patient when I didn't want to eat. He was patient when I didn't want to just go close to him. I couldn't sleep. I could only cry. And I was going through all these triggers that were just flashback and it just keep happening. He was very, very tolerant, very understanding, and very, very accepting. So no, I'm not afraid of losing him. Marlene, before we wrap this up, he said something interesting that, I, that I'm, I'm also aware of when it comes down to victims. Because I've been around situations where people that have been abused, sexually abused, they speak in their sleep and... They say things in their sleep like they're still going through the process or they're still they relive in the moment. Can you speak on that a little bit? So it relates to what Elaine said earlier about trauma. Like when you've gone tr through any kind of trauma, a lot of times when you go to sleep, you're basically dreaming about it again and you're reliving the experience over and over and over again. And it's not only when you're sleeping. I'm sure there's certain smells, there's certain sounds. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, I'm sure that Elaine can tell you that will bring it back. So you're constantly reliving it. And, you know, it's similar, like someone you talk about now, you have all these, I, I do work with veterans. So you have all these veterans that are coming back from Afghanistan, from Iraq, and they're coming back with PTSD. So it's similar. There's no difference between someone going to war than someone that's been, whether you're raped or you know sexually molested in any way, it's similar. Cause maybe someone could more understand like if they said, oh, you know, if, if a soldier that's coming back and they hear a loud noise, they immediately respond, it's similar. So maybe people will understand better what you're going through because I think for a lot of people, they fail to understand just how much when you've been through something like that, like Elaine said, it was feeling dirty, trying to, tr trying to you know, wash it off. And then I know that people may question and said, oh, you just got raped. Why would you wanna bathe when you know that, that you're gonna go um, you know, medical? Guess what? Majority of people, they wash themselves off because they feel so dirty. The first thing you're thinking is to wash, just wash yourself off. So it's, you know, listening to what, to what Elaine said, it's very common, even though a lot of people will look at it and say, oh, you just got raped. You know, you do know that you should have medical, you shouldn't wash yourself. But those are just normal reactions that someone may have. So it's, you know, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's related to not only, you know, like, like I said, and I'll repeat it again, a lot of people mostly see that as someone coming back from military or fighting in wars, but it's similar to sexual trauma. Interestingly, um, Tanya Stevens said the same thing with her ordeal. Um, she chose um, to, to remain to, to, to not say the person's name, but she um she said the same thing about washing herself. Like she said she was washing herself for like all the time. Like after the ordeal, she went home and she washed and she felt dirty. So I, I'm hearing this, I mean I'm hearing the same thing with, with what you're saying and what, what Elaine is saying. So I, I guess that's part of the trauma. Absolutely. And I guess Elaine could speak to that too, based on, you know, her trauma is pretty new. I mean, for years, there's certain behaviors. I scream in my sleep. 
if a man touches me in my sleep, you know, I have relationship issues because when I'm in a, in a relationship and someone touches, touches me in my sleep, I can never distinguish in my sleep that this is someone that loves me, that I'm no longer being, you know, abused. So it's something that I live with daily. And I could hear, you know, like, like Elaine's husband said, he wasn't able to touch her, you know, crying and all this. I've been there. So yes, it's, you know, if people would like view things that way, that when there's trauma there, we react that way. It's just subconsciously. It's not that we plan, it's just subconsciously. And it's just the way that the body deals with trauma. So in, 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 in 60 seconds, what can you say to them to, to, through this, to deal with whatever is going on with them? I would tell Elaine to continue to work with counseling. And then also her husband, I'm hearing you, sir. And I'm also hearing the same thing that the both, I, wait, let me just stop for a minute. I have to commend you on being such a strong man, first of all, to stand by her. I have to commend you for that because a lot of times, especially culture, you know, culturally, let's be for real. She's raped by someone that's totally different than you are. Alleg so, alleged, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Sorry. Allegedly, you know, rape. Let me just make that clear. Allegedly raped by someone that's so different than you are. And you're standing by her. I mean, even the culturally for her, the disgrace that surrounds her that's coming from family, from the outside, from everyone else. I, I give you a lot of credit for being there for her. And you know what? The reality is that Elaine needs that, but you both need counseling to get through this period. Well, I want, I want to thank you, um, Marlene, for, 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 for your words. Elaine? As I, as I told you before, I'm just, I think you, 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 you need to be heard. Um, and, and I spoke to you off the air and, and, I, and I don't want it to just be a conversation that we are having. Uh, I, I, I spoke to Richie, my platform is open. If, if Richie as, as you know, want to, want to, want the world to hear his side as well. So, um, Thanks for your time. And um, Zach. Yes, sir. I take my hats off to you, man. Thank you, sir. I, I'm sorry. My emotions got the best of me just now, but I'm, I really am sorry. A human brother, you have done what? Thank you. Um, the true survivor is Elaine. I, I'm here to support wherever I can. I know I know um, what it feels like to, to be around a woman that um is going through what she's going through i've had relationships where women cry in their sleep and get hysterical i've had relationships where um i remember fiance i had at one point in the middle of intercourse she passed out and started screaming and hollering and you know there was a dog that in in, in the whole thing that happened and she was like don't let him bite me don't let him bite me so it went to the point where sex was impossible and then we drifted and now listening to you, I feel guilty. I feel like, because at that point I was very immature. I think, I think I only saw a relationship at that time, like sex was the main part of a relationship. So I, I, mm -hmm. I was young and I drifted. And now listening to you, um, you know, you let me feel ashamed, brother. Uh, so, that's not what I meant to do. I want to tell the story of how a survivor goes through. You know, that's that's all I want to say. I want the truth to be out. How survivors, what survivors have to go through, the aftermath of everything that's ever gone through. You know? I think what people, and, that, that, and this is one of the reasons why, as a father, this is one of the reasons why I, I decided to share my platform with you guys. Thank you. Well, I, are, I appreciate that. You see this whole victim shaming? Um, I've seen a lot of those things in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I would hate to know that I had a, an opportunity to speak to you guys. 
and I passed on that opportunity. I was not there. I was not in that room. But I have children. And I'm going to listen to my children if this, God forbid, should happen. So stay strong. Thank you, Mr. Vegas. Thank you, Marlene, sir. Thanks again for the okay. conversation. We'll talk, we'll talk, Marlene, because I know you have a lot of stuff working on that I want to get thank involved with. Thank you so much, Elaine. Elaine and Zach, all the best. And, you know, I could just wish you all the best on this journey. Elaine? Yep. Thanks for coming on. Um, we heard you. And um, take care of yourself. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. If you, if whatever, you can let us know what's going on. You can give us the update. You can let me know. I'll share it with the people what's going on if you decide to continue. I, I, would, I would say that I don't trust the cops to really do anything because, you know, like you have heard, this is not an easy case once it surrounds consent. Right. And you did not expect this to happen. So you are not going to press record. You're not going to do anything because you're just shocked. In shock. Well, keep us posted. Yeah. We will. Take care, Zach. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. We go. Well, people, as I said before, the platform is open if Mr. Stevenson would like to say his piece because at the end of the day, I don't tell you, Mia Richie is real cool. Um, so the platform is open um, just to stay objective with the matter. Yeah. Um, I'm reading some of the comments in, in, in the chat and a person like Tatania, Tatania, I expected so much better from you. Um, but I think a lot of us are wolves in sheep clothing. A lot of us. We pretend like we are like we care about what women are or men go through. But Because it's disingenuous, because your, your, your care is so disingenuous, you cannot hide for long. And I, I, had, I had so much respect for you. And I'm looking at some of these comments, and your comments stood out. I just wanted to know I saw it. Big up on yourself, people. Stay safe. Oh, and one more thing. A person, uh, I saw some people asking about the rape kit. It's useless to ask about the rape kit. According to Elaine, Mr. Stevenson said it was consensual sex. The rape kit doesn't make any sense. Ding, ding, ding. What are you going to test for? DNA? He already, according to what she said, he admitted that they had intercourse or some form of intercourse happen or penetration. So that is off the table, in my opinion. So that's why I didn't ask because it would be like a stupid question on my part. All right. So I, I didn't want to ask a question. I saw it popping up. But if there is, con if, if Mr. Stevenson argument is that it was consensual sex and You see, give thanks.